Well, it really is some week to be recording a podcast. The photography show in the UK was cancelled, amongst so many other things, of course, but to us that was quite precious. It looks like we're heading for complete lockdown. It's now utterly impossible to buy toilet roll, though God only knows why that is the thing that people are panic panic buying. You can't eat the stuff. Uh, And my hands are scrubbed raw to the tune of I Will Survive. These truly are troubled times. But hey, I'm sitting here in our lovely studio. Uh, (laughs) I'm actually isolated, but not deliberately. It's just that on a Sunday, there's nothing else going on in here. Uh, And I'm thinking of anything but the coronavirus. I'm Paul, and this is the Mastering Portrait Photography podcast. Well, it is certainly troubled times. I was queuing the other day. I went into High Wycombe uh, to go get a haircut. And as part of that, I I parked up and I went into one of the supermarkets and I found myself stood next to a guy in the queue. Now, every trolley, as I looked around, was full of toilet paper, soap, pasta, rice. Just amazing. But one guy, the guy I admired the most, an elderly chap, his basket had, and I kid you not, eight bottles of red wine. That was it. And I looked at him and I smiled and he shrugged and he said, well, if I'm going to be isolated, I might as well enjoy myself. And I think that is the, that is the attitude we all need. Sadly for us, our daughter has it's been a stressful day, actually. Our daughter was headed off to Madagascar for six weeks to go help with the conservation of some coral reefs. She was going out there diving and she got as far as Johannesburg. So she's flown from London to Dubai, from Dubai to Johannesburg, and was literally about to get on the flight to go to Madagascar for six weeks and then on to Sydney. And Madagascar closed its borders as they were getting on the flight. So they took everything off, uh, and we're now desperately trying to book her a flight back to London. Really, these are interesting times. But I hope all of you are positive and energetic and you're feeling okay because at the end of the day, life really does go on. So tomorrow, uh, one of the things we were due to do uh, this week or in the coming weeks was to create a video on how to use a couple of the new Rotolite products. Uh, This stemmed from a professional photo magazine who sent us a query in from one of their readers who asked if it would be possible to write an article. So tomorrow, we're going to spend the day uh, playing with some Rotolite kit. Now, we weren't able to do that originally because all of the Rotolite kit would have been at the UK Photography Show, but uh, given it's been cancelled, we just thought, well, <laughs> let's make the best of a bad lot. Uh, I've got some models coming in. Myself and Sarah Plater are going to be filming it and also writing it up as a how-to. So a pair of those uh, units, more detail on that uh, coming. Uh, it has been actually a really busy couple of weeks. We ran uh, a wonderful training course last week in uh, Watley Manor. Watley Manor put this thing on and we take over for a day parts of the uh, the hotel. It's a beautiful hotel deep in the Cotswolds. Absolutely stunning location. Uh, and we spend the day taking photographs, talking about photography. It's only a handful of delegates. It's not a big course. Uh, we have just before lunch, a cheeky little bit of champagne and some canapé and then in to the most beautiful Michelin starred uh, meal. And of course, the idea is to actually spend it uh, doing photography or talking about photography, but lunch is included. So it's a great thing to do. And and one thing, I don't think people realise this, is when we run a training course, it's actually good for me. It's good for me and Sarah. Because at the end of it, you get to feel like you've done something and helped some people understand what it is that you do. And that energy is really good for us too. It helps me keep going for the next month or two until I run another one and then another one. And it's part of the the puzzle of how to stay motivated as a photographer. You know, sometimes the business can just be a little bit of a grind. I'm lucky here and that we're not a high volume uh, photography business, but nonetheless, running training courses is really, really good uh, for the soul. Uh, We also ran uh, one of the courses at the studio here in person, and we're still open. Incidentally, as an aside, we are very much still open for business here. We're a small studio. We're isolated. 
Anyway, this isn't a big village. And so as long as you can get yourself here, then we can still run uh, photography uh, courses or we, any type of photography for that matter. There's only the three of us and two of us live together. So uh, in terms of spread, we keep everything nice and clean here. Uh, we're always open for business. Uh, anyway, this particular podcast alludes to a visit by a lovely photographer. They, we met them, I think, at the at the SWPP convention back in January. And we always throw out the offer. If anyone wants to come and visit the studio, just sit down and have a cup of tea. You're very welcome. And so this really nice guy did come. And we spent a couple of hours chatting, went through his portfolio, went through his business, just talking really. And during this conversation, he mentioned something about his studio and I picked up on it. And he said, I just filled the entrance hall with the frames I couldn't find a place for. And I kind of looked at him and asked him to repeat that. And he said, I just filled the entrance hall, the entrance hall to the studio with frames I couldn't find a place for anywhere else. And I said, what? He said, yeah, I've, you know, I've got all of the, the, the really beautiful frames, the ones, you know, I found a proper place for those, but the ones I haven't found anywhere else for, I've just stuck them, I've just stuck them in the entrance hall. And of course, an alarm bell went off because that first impression, that very first moment when your client walks in the door is crucial and you cannot have a second go at it that's the point of a first impression it's the first and only first impression there's no second impression or third impression obviously you can build on it and it's not the be all and end all but you cannot change that first impression it's crucial particularly when you're selling your work when you're going to try and persuade a client to come in be photographed and then buy product that goes on the wall you can't just stick the stuff that you haven't got anywhere else to put as your first impression your first impression is everything and so after that after he left I sort of got to thinking thinking do you know what I wonder if our first impression is any good I've not looked for a long time because you live in a studio we've been in the studio for eight years and you know what it's like you get blind to it you just stop seeing all the things that your client is going to see in that first moment. And so I thought, you know what would be a good idea is why don't I analyse our studio and have a look at how well I do it, how well we do it. Because at the stage at which I was picking up the microphone, I wasn't entirely certain how well we do. I thought we'd do all right when I actually took a cold, hard look at our own first impression. So here it is. This is me walking through our front door as if I was a client arriving for the very first time. So I'm stood outside the studio and in the background you can tell you can tell our studio is in the countryside. In the background you can hear the birds singing. It's nice actually, the sun has come out. We've had non-stop rain for weeks and so it's really lovely that there's a little bit of blue sky and uh, the birds seem to be celebrating possibly as much as we are. So when I stand looking at the studio, what's the first impression? Well, the first impression is that it's a beautiful building. It's an old building. It used to be a bakery back in the 1800s. And the archi architect, uh, a very famous architect called Peter Aldington, who I've spoken about before, converted it in the 70s to become his first architectural practice. And it turns out he was pretty gifted at this stuff. And so I I'm standing looking. I'm in this beautiful country street looking at this huge oval door. On the one hand, on the right hand side, half of the oval is a plate glass window and the other half is this beautiful 1970s style, very retro style. Now, of course, solid wood door with this bright green handle surround and this beautiful chrome handle. On the window, uh, you can see our signature uh, in stainless steel. One of my clients, it turns out, was a tool maker uh, and he uh, traded me some images for um, some cutouts in stainless steel, uh, which of course is a very effective way of doing it. They're bonded to the glass. My signature looks, it looks great. Uh, behind the reflections of the sunshine, unfortunately today, because it's sunny, you can't see through the window. And this is something we've known for a while. Uh, not much I can do about that, unfortunately. Uh, you can't see through to the picture that we have on an easel behind. It's a beautiful picture of a wedding couple of hours. Um, uh, a very romantic moment under the archways of Le Manoir. So your first impression as you walk up to the thing is absolutely amazing. But of course, my task today is to look for the things that jar, the things that might 
you know, a client might spot, and the first thing I spot is there's an awful lot of handprints on our glass. Um, because lots of kids walk to and fro from school here, uh, they too tend to come and look at the picture in the window uh, when it's a little bit darker in the mornings and the afternoons. Um, they can see through the glass and they come and pour <laughs> they come and pour at it and so uh, our glass really could do with a clean but obviously you may understand at the moment we're not uh, able to keep up with that um, but th that's annoying and of course we've also had so much rain that there's an awful lot of splashback so I might just have to get myself a squeegee and get that sorted there's some cobwebs up there as well which is is, is not nice <laughs> on the lamppost outside our studio there's nothing I can do about this uh, the Haddenham Film Scock the Haddenham Screen Society they they hold films they, they um, uh, show films periodically in the youth and community centre and they always stick these really quite awful posters. Sorry if anyone from the Haddenham screen sock is listening, uh, but they always stick them on our lamppost and it's a huge distraction uh, for me, uh, but it's great for the community. It's a lovely thing that they're doing. Um, on the left hand side of our door is the number six. Um, it's beautifully designed, all of this. Uh, really, I should do this with a video as opposed to trying to describe it. But it's a beautiful piece of simple, simple plywood uh, with these uh, great, some nice lettering and the button for the, for the doorbell. That's just, yep, the doorbell is working. <laughs> so often I go to people's studios and the doorbell doesn't work. It's such a schoolboy error. Uh, if you have a doorbell, make sure it works. So let's head in to the studio and see what it looks like when we walk in. Okay, now I'm lucky, close the door behind me, I'm really lucky in that this studio exudes, exudes design style. It was designed by an architect. So I'm now stood in the hallway on the, on the right hand side of these three beautiful big circular pictures on acrylic uh, and they're mounted on these um, soft, they look like white painted notice boards. That really doesn't do them justice. In fact, they're covering a window that was long since hidden behind so I can't take these down. So what we've had to do is design a display that suits that. But they're big, they're bold, they're black and white. Uh, they look incredible. The other thing that strikes you when you walk in is the smell. Uh, we always have candles bur burning here when we have clients in. Uh, we use Yankee Candle. Uh, and incidentally, a big, big, big thank you to our client from the other day who gifted me. They, they, they came and, and she liked... Uh, liked, uh, liked us, I guess, so much that she bought us a new Yankee candle along with a wick trimmer, uh, a new one of these, like a little cover that goes on the top that stops the glass sutting up, um, and a putter outer, a snuffer, which is fantastic. Uh, but we do that, we always have the same scent, and there's some psychology for that, which is that at the end of the shoot, the last thing they smell in here is uh, the smell of these candles, and the first thing they smell when they come back to buy. Uh, the frames for the wall is the same scent. It's called olfactory memory. It's the most powerful memory in the human uh, because we, we, it's, it's, very, it's an old, a very old sensory part of the brain uh, and it associates things. So if we've given our client an amazing experience, then when they come back, uh, they should immediately, the scent, the smell of the studio should bring back the memories of the, the shoot. Um, on the left hand side we've got this huge print which is uh, one of my clients from a couple of years ago, Emily and Craig, a beautiful wedding, it's a sunset, uh, it's a location shot at their wedding, just lovely, beautiful light, striking oranges and golds, it's the two of them looking absolutely gorgeous, uh, a big frame and notice I've said this a couple of times, these are big images, we've, the minute a new client walks into here they are struck uh, by big images. Walking my way along the wall, uh, this is where we have a series of shells that have our awards, which is a really lovely thing. But I'm looking at it now and thinking, you know what, I really do need to have a look at this. It uh, all looks a little bit cluttered and things like, uh, what's this? This is the certificate from when I ran, ran. I know, I know, to look at me now, you wouldn't know I ran the London Marathon in 2012, but I did run the marathon in 2012. And I'm very proud uh, of uh, the medal and the, the stuff I've got, but unfortunately it does look like it's just thrown in there. Also the doorbell, the, the doorbell while it works is wedged on that shelf, which of course is crazy. Why haven't I spotted that before? That's awful. Um, below the shelves, um, on our left uh, is a big tub. I bought this beautiful, beautiful sort of porcelain tub uh, with pictures of umbrellas around it and it's full 
of uh, our wedding umbrellas. We used to carry these with us a lot. I don't do it so much anymore. Um, I just, I take a couple just in case. Uh, but I learned over the years that even if you take 10 umbrellas, the bride and groom are unlikely to want to go out and take very many pictures. So I just take a couple with me. Uh, a few of those look pretty battered, actually. They, didn't, they need replacing. They're not hugely expensive. I don't know why I haven't done that. Um, over to the right-hand side, this is where we have our shelves. These are the shelves that, uh, in the busy part of the year, it's quieter at the moment, in the busy part of the year, have a couple of things on them. The most important thing is they have the products, the smaller products, the albums and the gift frames, that our clients are going to come and pick up. Each of them is beautifully wrapped uh, with a ribbon. We have these black ribbons with my signature in silver on them. Each has got a little handwritten label uh, and it's just, it looks beautiful. And then towards Christmas, when this is full, it looks incredible. And we have a slight problem in, when I bought this. This is an Ikea unit, Ikea. Uh, is that the shelves are perfect for everything except our wedding albums where the box is just that little bit bigger. Uh, so we're having to, I'm thinking I might have to replace this uh, with some uh, shelving with a bigger, uh, bigger slots on it. Uh, there's some magazines here in which we featured. Uh, there's some advertising for Halo FX. It's their, their leaflets. We always keep them here. A good friend of mine, a fantastic fireworks designer. Uh, so I have those leaflets. There's a grub screw. <laughs> I don't know what on earth. Where on earth does a grub screw come from? I better put that back and then maybe do some detective work later and find out where that's come from. It's amazing the things you miss, and that's the point of this, is it's amazing, you become blind to it. So I'm trying to look at this room, at the building, for the first time as if I was a client, and the things that I might just notice and, and pique my interest, and hopefully things are good, and then there are things that probably aren't so good that I need to address. Turning hard to my right, just behind, or beside the easel that's in the window, um, so I'm now looking with the huge great plate glass window on my right with the sun streaming in. There's a pair of camping tables and a tyre inflator. Oh, man alive. Um, I took, I had to, when we, when we redid the kitchen here uh, a couple of months ago, I had to load up the Land Rover with the old fridge and take it down to the tip uh, to go and be recycled. And of course I took everything that was in the Land Rover, which is a pair of camping chairs that I keep for when I go and see our brother, uh, sorry, I go see our son play cricket. Oh look, there's some... There's some antifreeze behind there as well. Brilliant. Clearly, I have stopped paying attention to my own space. I need to load that up. And on that note, on the other side of the shelves, just a bit further into the hallway, is the back shelf of the Land Rover, which <laughs> I built. It's really heavy. Uh, I keep meaning to drive the Land Rover down and drop that back in. Uh, beside the stairs, we have this wonderful staircase. And again, I'm, very, I'm blessed here, and I get away with quite a lot. The sheer scale and audacity of the design of our entrance means that people really are going, whoa, more than they're going, what on earth is that doing there? Uh, but nonetheless, I really can now, now I'm looking at this, I can see the clutter and I can see the things uh, that I need to tidy up over the next couple of days. Uh, there's a travel rug on the floor beside the stairs. There's three boxes of our book, Mastering Portrait Photography, sitting here. We keep a stock of them. God knows why they're there. <laughs> At some point, I've decided that's a good idea. Probably because when I'm loading up the Land Rover, I might chuck a couple of copies in, and I've just left them piled there. What on earth? Uh, under the stairs are some, some of our smaller kit. I keep it here because this is the stuff I will take when I'm running out the door. I'll scoop up a couple of light stands, maybe a paper background, maybe a soft box, and throw them into the Land Rover. And they're put here because to get them put away anywhere else means a couple of flights of stairs. Uh, and it just means that I don't bother, I just dump them on the floor because I'm lazy. Which is a terrible thing, but there you go. Maybe call it efficient. Let's not call it lazy, let's call it efficient. But clearly that's not, that needs tidying up, not least because my ski boots are there from a ski trip the other day uh, when our friends dropped them back round. And going further in, we, we've, we had uh, my friend Ben Morley, or our friend Ben Morley, who's a fantastic guy, built this wonderful rack. We have this huge rack, it's about, uh, let me look, that's what, about four foot, high it has these big curved um, dividers and this is where we put the frames ready for our clients to come and pick them up uh, usually they're full and this time of year of course it's a little bit quieter uh, because we're still building into the season with everything going on just at the moment uh, let's hope that that turns into a really good season um, in there there's some i've got a big box of diy tools uh, a dust sheet a midi keyboard and some other boxes of junk brilliant Again, the messaging my clients must be seeing cannot be good when they see that. I get away with it because of everything else, 
and I say, well, we're just doing some work on the studio, but of course I need to tidy that up. I really desperately need to tidy that up. Uh, our recycling trays are here as well. So when we have the big cardboard boxes from our framer, they get stacked in here and that really irritates me, but we don't have any other space uh, to put them short of me buying a shredder for the cardboard. Uh, there's a pair of ladders. There's usually a couple of pairs of ladders here. Uh, that's because they're stacked, ready to go out in the Land Rover. And if I do need them up in the studio, I can just grab them uh, and take them up there. Um, there's also a piece of artwork here that was donated to us uh, that I really need to find a home for. Uh, now, working my way, uh, fire extinguishers. You can't do a lot about fire extinguishers. Unfortunately, they're a necessary evil. Uh, big red unit sat beside the floor. Nothing nice about that. Uh, and an old aluminium pole from a background by the look of it. What's that? Oh, it is. It's an old aluminium <laughs> pole from a, from a background. Need to find a home for that. So you can see my point. When you start to look at your building cold, even here where we're really proud of the experience, we're really proud of the impact, you can see already or hear already that there's plenty of work for me to do. And then you come into the corner. This is where our two loos are side by side. And I've just noticed one of our light bulbs is out. A great hotelier said to me, he said, you also, when you're looking around a competitor's hotel, he said, look at the light bulbs. He said, if there's a light bulb out, the general manager is not on top of his game. And I've got a light bulb out here, which is dreadful, but I think I need to change that light fitting because uh, the bulbs we have in here are old school halogen uh, and it's a high time we switched over to LED and this fitting won't take an LED bulb. Um, our loos, let me click a light on here. Our loos are beautiful, weird, but beautiful. Um, they're really, the, the design of the, of the toilets and the, and the sinks and everything, again, was commissioned specifically for this building back in the 70s. Uh, but I'm looking now and I can see a couple of screws sitting on the side where we've had a back panel off. We've had a, one of the drains blocked up. It was my landlord's problem, not mine in the end. But nonetheless, we've had uh, the back plate off and it looks like I haven't finished screwing that on. I think I was waiting until I was certain it was all fixed. But of course, that was a couple of weeks ago and there's a pair of screws just sitting there. Ah, oh, what kind of impression does that leave? Uh, let's, let me turn that light back off. Second toilet, let's have a quick look in there. Each of the toilets has uh, beautiful, um, what's this, branche d'olive uh, scent, but they look like they need filling up. They've obviously uh, drained out. We use, uh, what's these soaps? I love these soaps. Neil's Yard, Neil's Yard, Rose. geranium and orange. It's one of the nicest smells, nicest smells on the planet. That uh, We always have on each sink, a bottle of the hand wash and a bottle of the moisturizer, the lotion. Uh, someone's left the loose seat up. That's not me, that's my clients. I really hate it when people leave the loose seat up, but people do. Um, everything's nice, nice luxury towels in here. Everything's pristine, the mirror is spotless. Uh, and each, uh, each of our loose has a frame that features some pictures. And that type of frame that I'd like to sell. Uh, the paintwork is good. I can't see anything major in there actually. That's really good. Toilet rolls, could probably do the spare in each of those, but they will be reset on Monday every week. We put spares in. Uh, just make sure everything's okay. So the toilets are immaculate, other than me leaving some screws lying around. They smell good too, because the branch still leaves scents. And again, lots of sensory stuff. So I'm showing off, not just pictures on the walls, but they're lit well. The toilets are slightly kooky. There's not always a lot you can do about that, but they are immaculate. Uh, and uh, they have uh, the scent in there when you go in. Now, let's walk away round. I'm about to go up the stairs. Now our stairs are, it's a, it's a zigzag stair. So one, you get to a mid landing and then you go across and that'll take you to the kitchen and then down the other side into the meeting and viewing rooms. And then the, the, the stairs zigzag back almost over my head here. It's really quite dramatic. Big solid wood stairs with this chunky iron frame around it. Looks great, but I'm looking at the left hand side and there is one of my huge scrims. Uh, where I slid it down beside the stairs at some point, probably two years ago, looking at the dust on it, thinking it's a good place to store it. I can easily retrieve it. I don't remember the last time I used it, so it's been sitting there for two years. Remind me to come back and take that out. So as I come up the stairs, we have a coat rack, which I love. Our hat rack is brilliant. It was in the, in the offices uh, when we moved in. And like I said, when we moved in, we're getting rid of that. And Sarah wanted to keep it. And I've grown to love the thing. It's tatty, it's crappy, it's, it's dyed wood to look mahogany, but I'm laying a bet. Let me see if I can lift it. Well, no, it's quite heavy. So it's not pine, whatever wood that is. Um, it's not beautiful, but it is solid. And at the moment it has, what does it has? It has a top hat on it, which is when our son did um, Willy Wonka. He was um, Willy Wonka, I think, in the show. Uh, and there's one random small boys trainer. If you're listening to this, 
uh, we have your small boys trainer. It's a grey trainer, it looks a little bit like a Converse, probably child size, four years old. No idea, we found it in the studio or found it under the sofa or something. So it's hanging on our hat rack waiting for the owner to come back and say, ah, oh, I wondered where that went though. I think it's been here a long time and I would guess your son, if you're hearing this, has probably already uh, grown out of it. But I look at the wall on the left and the wall on the left, the, the, we come into this sort of opening at the mid landing and it just soars above our heads and there's a huge, huge picture. Uh, now this particular style of, is, of frame is not one we sell, or not often anyway, we certainly don't try to sell it. It's a massive box frame uh, with a laminated print on the front. And the reason we don't sell it is this one is too big. Uh, it's beyond the size that our friendly uh, framer Kaleidoscope were willing to sell, but we've always promised that, that we would never try to sell it because it, it's, it, it does, they can't hold the structural integrity uh, during shipping, but we managed to get one shipped down to us and it sits prior to place. It's a shot I took of Marisa in a wedding dress way back, uh, won a load of awards. And of course, we, our studio has multiple functions. Sometimes we're trying to just create that wow factor. Sometimes I'm trying to win a pitch. Sometimes I'm trying to persuade our client to buy some big pictures. The purpose of having a huge award-winning wedding picture here is so that when a bride and groom comes in and they see it, and they do, it's like a clincher. It's, oh my goodness, look at that. That is just lovely. Marisa is stunning, the dress. A Galli Le Havre dress is just amazing. It's shot at the Manoir, which of course is one of our main venues. Uh, my signature is underneath it in stainless steel on the wall, which I think looks pretty cool. Actually, it didn't say Paul Wilkinson for ages. It said all Wilkinson because the letter P kept, and I mean kept, falling off. Uh, but I found a way of clamping, clamping on as the adhesive set and it appears to have stayed fast. Uh, for the past week or so. So I'm, <laughs> even, on, even on Netflix, my kids have renamed my account All Wilkinson, A-U-L Wilkinson, uh, because they kept laughing at the fact the letter P was missing, but I've had to find a way of getting that to attach. But these are all signals when the letter P is missing. If I don't pay attention to the details like this, what do my clients think I'm paying attention to? They think they're gonna miss the details in their photography, of course. So it's really important that I got that right. Uh, it was frustrating that it kept falling off. Um, I look around me and I'm in this gorgeous space. We could actually use this wall far more effectively. Maybe that's something we do this year. I think there should be more pictures on here. But I, did, I never wanted our studio to look like I was trying to sell lots of pictures. I don't mind it looking like an art gallery where each piece of, each piece of uh, photography is valued. Each piece of photography is presented well. I'm not trying to sell frames. Wait, what? I'm not trying to sell frames? Of course I'm trying to sell frames. What I meant to say was I'm not trying to sell the wooden bit. I'm not trying to sell lots of different types of frame rims. I am trying to sell frames. I'm just not a framer. Anyway, back to it. I'm not trying to sell frames, so I don't have to have an example of every type of frame. And in fact, as I've just said, this isn't one we sell. It just looks great here. And it's been put on the wall uh, to uh, really just have that wow factor. Interestingly enough, beside each of these big hero pictures down here is an A4 board where I've written uh, a little story about um, each of the images. And so let me read to you what I wrote for Marisa. There's not, it's not deep, it's not poetry, uh, but you'd be amazed how many people uh, actually pay attention to this. And it says on here, it just says Marisa in big letters, and at the bottom it says UK Bridal Image of the Year, International Master Photography Awards 2014. That's how old this picture is, but everybody knows it. Um, and it says on the, in the middle, it's the bit I've written, it says, ever since I created this image of Marisa, uh, sorry, I created this image at Marisa and James's gorgeous wedding last year, I've been asked how we did it, how long it took, what kit we used. Perhaps surprisingly, the honest truth is we never have that kind of time at a wedding. And yes, this is a real wedding. It took just a minute or two and nothing fancy. Just the camera, no reflectors, no lights. Marisa had asked us during the planning if we could create this kind of image you see, uh, this kind of image, the kind of image you see in fashion and bridal magazines, and we were more than happy to oblige, particularly if she was going to be wearing a Gallia Le Havre dress. I know Le Manoir really well, and this patch of light is always rich and gorgeous, even on a dull day. I had taken plenty of pictures of the couple, and so I suggested we try for the shot of Marisa and it took just a little styling just to shush out the dress and to echo Marisa's beautifully gentle nature. I asked her to look down her body almost shyly. Instantly, I knew I had the image 
and we'll be back in good time for the wedding breakfast. In fact, we are back in good time to continue drinking the champagne. The bubbles were still rising in the glass. And that's all I've written against that picture. But what happens is when people come into the studio, they see the picture, they're looking at it, they see the explanation, and then many of them will stop and read it. And it helps me when people, when you do that, it just helps slow someone down a little so that I have time to get across whatever points I want. So one of the problems you have with clients coming through is it can all happen quite quickly. And so a little device, like something they can read on the wall next to a stunning picture, um, is a nice device. Um, on some of the pictures, this one clearly, we don't have a price because I won't sell it. But on some of the pictures, it will also have what the frame is, how big it is, and how much that would cost. At the end of the day, this is a business. And everything we're doing is to try and uh, ensure that the client trusts that I can take those kinds of pictures of their family, those kinds of pictures of their wedding, those kinds of pictures, even commercially. And at the end of it, they're gonna pay me for those. They're gonna buy them. That's, we've started the transaction the minute they've started to enjoy the surroundings and see those images. So I come around the landing uh, and I, I'm not gonna do a full kind of thing on the other bits of the building, but you do walk straight down some other stairs into our viewing room. And the first image, that, the first thing that strikes you is this stunning big acrylic on the far wall. Uh, of Pauline, who was 87 when I took this picture. Again, an awarding image. Again, um, a big image. I've noticed all of the frames I'm describing are big frames. Why? Well, I want, the, I want my client to get used to the idea that big frames look incredible. If I just show small frames, guess what they're going to buy? So this is a huge acrylic on the wall of Pauline. Uh, everything's neat and tidy in here. There's not actually very much in here. The cushions are perfectly plumped up. Our books look great. So some of the Mastering Portrait Photography books are laid out, uh, English, Italian and German. Not that I ever have Italian and German people in here, but it just looks impressive when you see that it's been published in multiple languages. Uh, again, there are candles in here that just give off that really beautiful aroma. Uh, there's a beautiful framed TV. So the TV has one of our frames around. It's a big TV, but it has an ornate wooden surround. So it looks like a frame. Now I know Samsung now actually make an art TV and I suggest you have a good look at that if you have a TV in your studio. We haven't yet because I've got a couple of years uh, return on the investment on this TV to get. Uh, it's mounted on as a wood plinth that has my, again, my stainless steel signature everywhere with the letter P, it still has the letter P. But you just know you can feel, you can feel that this is a serious business. We mean what we're saying. Each, there are four wedding pictures along the other wall each of them in the same frame. Why have I used the same frame? Simply so it looks like an art gallery, not so it looks like a shop that sells frames. I want the client to get the idea that they can, the, the, a wall looks fantastic. If you went into a client's lounge and they've bought three of your pictures or four of your pictures, they're not gonna be each in a different frame and yet so many studios I go to have different frames. We don't, we have the same frame throughout and then behind one of the doors, I actually have all of the frame profiles uh, that collide, or at least the ones that we, we like to sell at Kaleidoscope. So I can sell a client any frame they like, I just don't use those frames to show off the pictures on the wall. And then you walk through there into the far room, the furthest room of the downstairs, and there is our viewing room. This viewing room is the most underutilized and yet the most valuable room here. The only time a client will come in here is when they're coming to see their pictures, they're coming to buy their frames. This is not this is not a room we hold meetings in, it's not a room I shoot in, it is here for one purpose, one purpose alone, and that is to complete the process of selling pictures. And so I know a couple of photographers are coming on site visits and they're confused that I've got so much space dedicated to something we don't do very much of. We need you know, maybe five or six clients a week, this room is used five or six times a week, that's all. And that's really deliberate. That's, there's meant to be magic in here. And I say to people, I say, when I finish the shoot, I give them the price card, where I walk them in here and I say, look, I'm gonna bring you in here and I'm gonna show you your pictures. I've loved your shoot. The shoot was amazing. The shoot was beautiful. Your kids, oh my God, your kids are incredible. You should see the pictures we've just created together. We're gonna to show you those pictures. You're gonna sit here on our sofa. I stroke the sofa. It's a beautiful thing, it's a big leather sofa. We're gonna sit here, we're gonna play a slideshow, we're gonna set it to soft music, and the one thing that's gonna happen is it's gonna soften your wallet. I guarantee this, and I'm good at this. <laughs> I tell them all this, I'm laughing, of course I'm laughing, yeah, I'm joking, but I like the process, and if I do the setup at the end of the shoot correctly, it makes it much easier for Michelle or Sarah who's doing the sales later down the line. It's really important 
really important that I do the setup correctly and then the downstream process is so much more straightforward. So I'm showing them this and I show them the price list and I say, this is how much each of the frames costs. I work my way down it. I make sure there's nothing that they don't understand. And I say, but I want you to have one of these. And at which point I turn around and there's a huge aluminium on this wall. It's the same size. It's a 60 inch aluminium. I don't sell very many of these. Um, they sell a few. And I hug it and I say, but I think you want one of these. Oh, I think you would love one of these. And of course, I've got no idea what their house looks like. It might be tiny. It might have curved walls. But I always show them the big stuff. They're not going to buy the big stuff. That's not the point. The point is I'm setting an expectation. And of course, they say, how big is that? I say, that's a 60 inch aluminium. They look at the price. They see the price. It's a big number. Now, though, they're getting used to how much things cost. Now, there's, we don't want any surprises. And I'm always happy to talk about pricing with my client. It's not a problem. Uh, either side of this huge viewing screen, we have, I think it's a 65 inch um, 4K Sony TV in the middle uh, that just looks wonderful. Uh, when you're sat on the sofa, the colours are rich and vibrant. We used to use a projector, but I could never get the colours the way I saw them on the screen. Now I can. And contrary to the conventional wisdom that you need to have a display that's bigger than the screen, sorry, that's bigger than the largest product you want to sell, you don't. What you have to have is a way of showing your client beautiful pictures. And with this big screen now, we can do precisely that. We use a tape measure and show them how big something is when it comes to the wall. Either side of the TV, on one side there's a huge, great single image in a glass fronted wood rimmed frame. And on the other side is a multi-image montage in a precisely the same frame. These are our highest value assets. They're the frames we sell the most of, particularly the multi-frame. That just flies out. Uh, and partly explains why our averages are so high. The little desk gift frames, they're not in front of the client. They're on the back behind the client because I don't really want them to be buying the gift frames. I want to put a beautiful piece of work on their wall. And the reason for that is I think it's better value. I think the client is going to enjoy that picture so much more. Yes, it's expensive. But in terms of value, the enjoyment they'll get for the money they spend Big pictures on a wall are so much richer, are so much more uh, intense and so much more exciting for the client. And so actually we know this, that when our clients buy a good size picture, the feedback we get is better than when they just have uh, a little desk frame. So they're on the back. They're there so we can show people, but I'm not trying to sell those. Those will sell themselves. And so those are our studios. They're beautifully lit. They're spotlessly clean. Turn the lights off. They're beautifully clean. Uh, the glass, these, sometimes on these windows, we have these beautiful patio windows in the meeting room that look out over a world famous garden. I'm looking into this backyard that is stunning. It's always stunning. It doesn't matter what time of year, what weather, it's always gorgeous. This, this stunning location that is our studio uh, backdrop. However, the wood pigeons do fly down sometimes and slam into the glass and occasionally I have to clean off the outline of a pigeon. I never ever find a pigeon body. Uh, but I can't, you can't do them any good slamming into the glass. Uh, but just at the moment, I know the glass needs cleaning. I can see children's fingerprints on it. So hopefully, actually, I've done pretty well. I kind of described what was going on in the entrance. And I'm talking about that first impression and then led you through. And even in my studio, even here, where we think we do a pretty good job of this, you can hear that I've screwed it up royally in certain aspects. And so when I eventually finish this podcast, I've got to go back, <laughs> grab the Land Rover and load up with all of the things that shouldn't be down there. Uh, the bits and pieces uh, that came out of the Land Rover, plus my tools that I've, I will eventually finish doing the DIY. I need to move those books and I need to collapse, collapse that scrim and put it somewhere sensible that isn't the first thing my clients see. Now I'm lucky, this studio has this massive wow factor. The minute you walk in this studio, it's just glorious. Even every day, I've been here eight years now, and every day I walk in and it makes me utterly smile. I absolutely adore it. And my clients feel the same way. So I get away with quite a lot. It's a huge distraction having this space. And it means I'll probably get away with the fact there's a pair of camping seats leaning against the wall down there. If it's a normal studio, if it's a rented office, it's a little bit more tricky. In this studio, we've done our best to make it feel like you're in the workplace of an artist. That was a deliberate decision, it's not random, because we couldn't quite figure out how to brand me. And so 
we sort of took this view, well, let's see what happens if we put some easels in. We have pictures on frames and we don't try to make it immaculate. We try to make it look like it's working. There's always stuff going on. There's always frames on the racks. There's always stuff going out the door. There's always sort of framing and packaging going up. As you come up the stairs to the top, and I'm not going to walk through the whole studio, but as you come up the very top to the very top level, which is where we work and where the photography space is, there's, you can see straight away, there's a big flat plan drawer, a set of drawers for um, big prints. In fact, in there, mostly it's mounts. There is some paper in there and a few bits and pieces, but it looks like a serious space. It looks like we are working and we are creating images and creating product for our clients. And that is deliberate. And you have to do that. You have to kind of figure out the messaging you want to send. But on that happy note, I really think I need to go get the Land Rover and remove those chairs. <laughs> so in the end, it does look like I've got some work to do over the coming week, which is just as well because it's uh, it does look like the diary might be a little quieter than normal for this time of year. So I've got plenty of jobs I need to do. And I thought it was quite amusing that having talked a good story about that first impression is our studio too has things that I can improve. And so I'm simply going to go and do that. Also, I must apologise <laughs> slightly. When I set out recording, it was all about critiquing the space. And by the time I'd finished, I'm talking about workflow. I'm talking about how we present to the client. <laughs> I'm talking about sales stuff, uh, which really could have been a topic of a different podcast. So apologies for me um, managing to distract myself. But anyway, that's always what I'm like. Uh, but what is true is it's sometimes really useful having someone to bounce ideas off. It's hugely valuable. And on that note, whatever else is going on out there, we are still running our bespoke workshop days here at our studio. You can still come along and we can dedicate an entire day to your photography, your business and your future. Uh, everyone who has come on one of these days uh, has said it's been incredibly, incredibly valuable, a huge amount of fun, and they all say the same thing. It is exhausting, which I'll take as a good thing. It might not be. It might simply be that an entire day in my company wears you down. Uh, but of course, it's not just me here in the studio. Uh, I'm lucky that I've got both Sarah and Michelle to hand, who are both amazing at the client support, the business management and the sales room, the sales room side of things, which is so, so important. So if you fancy coming along and you want to focus on your business as much as your photography, then we are ideally set up to do that. And right now, of course, with everything that's going on, focusing on your business is a very, very good idea because you're a little bit quieter than you might normally be. And once everything does settle down, and it will settle down, we are all going to need to crack on and make the best of things. So if you fancy getting ahead of yourself or getting ahead of the game and coming over and spending a day talking about photography, talking about your business, then why not pop over to paulwilkinsonphotography.co.uk. Notice that's a slightly different web address. It's not on masteringportraitphotography.com. This is uh, Paul Wilkinson being Paul Wilkinson. It's me being me. So it's paulwilkinsonphotography.co.uk. Or, of course, you can just drop me an email at paul at paulwilkinsonphotography.co.uk. That's paul at paulwilkinsonphotography.co.uk. It is only 595 of your English pounds for an entire day. Uh, we do include a little lunch in there. We bring in some models as required. Um, we don't. It's not a long lunch. <laughs> it's, it's lunch on the go because we want to make every single second count. Maybe that's why it's so exhausting. Maybe we should do it like we did it at Watley and just have a champagne and canapé <laughs> and just chill out. Uh, but we think if you're paying us money, we really do owe it to you to give you a huge amount of stuff, a huge amount of information, a huge amount of inspiration, hopefully, that you can take away and apply to your photography and or your business. And if you fancy it, you can also bring someone with you. I think we charge 50 quid per extra head. Uh, it's not very much more, and that's really just to cover some additional costs and things because, of course, once I've uh, covered my day, it doesn't matter whether I talk to one person, two people or three people, though uh, it does it does matter that you like the person you bring with you. <laughs> it's no good just bringing any old person. It has to be someone who is in tune with what you want to get out of the day. Uh, so very often people will bring their business partner, second photographer, uh, husband, wife, that kind of thing. So, yeah, £595. We will be running these courses over the coming weeks because as a studio, um, we're ideally set up for that no matter what's going on, what's going on out there uh, in the portrait and wedding markets. Uh, incidentally, 
Incidentally, on the note of sales room techniques, if you're looking for a few resources to help you, we have just started adding room sets. Uh, now, a room set, as an aside, is just a way of showing your client how pictures, how their pictures might look if you put them on a wall. Uh, we're creating loads of these. I'm busily uh, rendering them up, designing them and rendering them up. Uh, there'll be a new one pretty much every day at the moment. Uh, they're all going on to masteringportraitphotography.com because visualisation, visualisation is a huge, it's a massive component, component of effective selling. You really do need to guide your client, inspire your client, energise your client, get them to see how beautiful your pictures could look on the wall. And so we're now producing these hyper-realistic uh, ways of helping your clients picture how these things will look. You can download them. They're on masteringportraitphotography.com right now. If you're a member of masteringportraitphotography.com, in fact, you have to be a member to download them. But if you are a member, they're free. They are right now free. That's not going to stay that way. So get in early, get them uh, right now, because as we start to really ramp up that side of it, we're going to have to do some charging. Uh, but right now we're making them all available uh, for free and gratis. So head over to masteringportraitphotography.com, which not only has all of those resources, but also is the home of this, the Mastering Portrait Photography podcast. So all in all, it's been an interesting week. Certainly we've got interesting weeks coming, but rest assured we'll be here making photography great again. <laughs> Sorry, I could not resist a little Trumpism at the end. So until next time, do remember... Be kind to yourself and wash those hands. Goodbye.